Hi folks. In this video I'm going to show you how I built the girder forks and rear PDS suspension for my new custom electric motorbike. I started the same way that I did with the chassis by making all the fixtures from DOM tubing first and then mounting them to the jig. These will be used for connecting the front wheel axle and the linkages to the fork tubes after they're bent. I made the fork tubes by laying out a full scale profile on the workbench as a guide for marking and bending the tubes after the rough cut to length, the same way that I did for the chassis and swing arm, starting with the front tubes. After bending, I notched the tubes for the top fixture that connects to the upper linkage first because the compound angles are usually more difficult. So by cutting the tube long to begin with and then tackling the more difficult notch, I have some extra material to work with in case I make a mistake and won't have to toss the tube in the scrap pile and start over. After the top was notched and checked, I used the lower axle fixtures as reference for marking the bottom of the tubes and notched them as well. Then I tack followed the tubes in place and repeated the process for the back tubes. When I first planned this project, I had every intention on building it using the same simple tools that I used for the last bike. I ordered DOM tubing in all kinds of different sizes so that I could make bearing housings and other things without needing a lathe, for example. But the more I thought about how much effort I put into working around not having one in the past, and especially the difficulty in making a custom steering tube without one, the more it made sense to bite the bullet and get a mini lathe for the workshop. I won't go into too much detail about how I'm using it since I'm a novice myself and there are already loads of great videos on YouTube explaining it anyway, but I'll put a link to where I bought it from in the video description in case anyone's interested. Here I'm cleaning up some DOM tubing to make the linkages for the forks. These will house the bearings that everything will pivot on. Instead of getting thick tubing and boring it out to form a seat for the bearings to rest against, I used a couple of thinner tubes, one that's twice the thickness of the bearing shorter and with an outside diameter matching the inside diameter of the other tube. I slid the smaller tube into the larger tube and plug welded them together. Next I turned and threaded the link rods from stainless steel. One thing I will note about the threading procedure is that I do have the compound slide set to around 29 degrees and use it to do the work. I've heard some folks say that it should be set to 30 degrees while others say that anything under 30 will do the job. Let me know what you think in the comments. As I said, I'm a novice at using metal lathes so any tips you can give regarding anything you see me doing here would be appreciated. After the parts for the linkages were made, I assembled them on some wooden jigs that hold everything in place as I tack welded them together. You'll probably notice that I'm using some self-lubricating bronze bearings in the fixtures beside the bearings too. 
They're probably not needed, but I just wanted to add some extra protection for the steel fixtures in case the bearing ever seizes and the rods try to spin in the fixture. This way they'll spin in the bushings instead of wearing down the hole in the fixture itself. Next, I cut and drilled a steel plate that the steering tube, upper linkage, and handlebars will attach to, then moved on to turning and threading the steering tube itself. The steering tube needs to be fastened permanently to part of the lower linkage, so I notch the bottom end accordingly before assembling all of the components on the jig.
The differences between a good set of girder forks and telescopic are marginal in my opinion, not enough for the average rider to notice, but I do imagine it would matter on a track. Girder forks have a higher unsprung mass, which changes suspension requirements to manage it properly, and will probably change how a bike handles and performs. But girder forks provide an anti-dive effect when braking the front wheels, so they have more travel available during braking and can use it more efficiently, which also affects handling and performance. To what extent is anyone's guess? From my so-called research, the main reason most production bikes use telescopic is simply because they're easier to produce. The same reason why most rely on a certain level of automation to make die-cast aluminum frames instead of hiring skilled fabricators to make complicated trellis frames. There are pros and cons to each, and they're not the only styles being used either. I guess like most things, it boils down to a personal choice. I personally like how girder forks look on a naked bike, especially an electric bike that would otherwise be lacking in what I call mechanical character. It's the only reason why I chose to build a set for this bike. I don't want it to just be another box on wheels, if you know what I mean. But let me know what you think, especially if you have experience riding with girders and telescopic. As you can see, the linkages provide a good 4 inches or more of travel before they start to affect things like wheelbase and trail beyond what a conventional set of telescopic forks will. Unlike telescopic, because of how girder forks operate, the linkages cause the axle to travel in an arc when the suspension is compressed. The radius of the arc depends on the length of the linkages, which can be designed to limit that effect, but not eliminate it completely by any practical means. The goal with girder fork design is to size and angle the linkages so that the arc radius is large and they cause the axle's position to start and end on a linear path that matches the rake angle when the bike's loaded and during full compression, so as to mimic the linear travel and performance of telescopic forks as much as possible. After checking that the links will work, I installed the front coilover shock. Notice that the spaces between the coils get progressively tighter from one end to the other. This is called a progressive spring, which provides some progressive dampening and will help counter the extra unsprung mass in the forks. Progressive dampening means that the dampening the shock provides progressively increases as the spring's compressed, so it'll help smooth out the small bumps in the road while providing adequate dampening for the larger bumps. I'm sure everyone's as curious as I was to see how much the girder forks weigh compared to the telescopic forks that I used for the previous bike. I included the same components when weighing each, with the exception of the caliper brackets for the girder forks, which I hadn't yet made. Without them, the forks weighed exactly the same at 20.8 pounds. The caliper brackets probably added another half to a pound once they were tacked on. So that's not too bad. I was hoping they would be a pound or two lighter, but I'm happy with this. Once the front forks were done, I moved on to making the progressive dampening linkage for the rear suspension, which is just a system of levers connected to the swing arm and the coilover shock that accomplishes a similar progressive dampening effect as the progressive spring in the front forks. You're probably wondering what those black things are that I'm sticking in the tubes. I ran out of bearings and had to order more, so I just 3D printed some mock bearings so I could get the assembly done while I was waiting. I chose to add one to mine because of the extra unsprung mass in the rear wheel. Normally an alloy wheel would weigh around 15 to 20 pounds, but this one that I'm using is also housing a 40 pound mortar, so there's a considerable amount of weight back there that needs more control, which means using a coilover shock with a higher spring rate, which also means more back pain if it's not controlled properly. That was my biggest complaint with the previous bike. I used the same motor with a PDS linkage from a GSXR 750 in the leaning tadpole trike that I had built a few months prior, and it worked really good. Big bumps were still hard, but small bumps were hardly noticeable compared to riding the bike. Next I made the front caliper brackets and welded them to the forks, then started making the kickstand. It's a simple contraption, and the trick to these is using a strong spring, getting the position of the top anchor bolt for the spring as close to the middle of the kickstand swing range as possible, and installing the spring under a bit of tension when it's in a resting or standing position. When the kickstand swings, the spring is stretched even more as it passes over the pivot bolt in both directions. That extra tension causes the spring to pull the kickstand in either direction to where it needs to be depending on which side of the pivot bolt the spring is passed by.
When the kickstand was out of the way, I made some custom foot pegs and brackets to mount them to, then removed the bike from the jig to install the wheels. The hub motor that I'm using is the QS27390H mounted in a 6 inch wide by a 17 inch diameter wheel and it would be the 12 kilowatt continuous 28 kilowatt peak version. Anyone familiar with this motor knows that it comes with a couple of torque arms for extra reinforcement against the torque that the motor produces on startup. I made similar torque arms but welded a threaded stud to one end so they can serve as adjusters for aligning the rear wheel with the front as well as provide reinforcement for the axle. The front wheel is held in place with a through axle and clamps at the bottom of the forks to hold the axle securely in place. I forgot how annoying this is to do without a bike lift, so I think that'll be the next investment for the workshop in the near future. After the wheels were on, I checked that the kickstand worked alright and sat on the bike to get a feel for how the suspension was going to work. Of course I still have to add another 100 pound battery yet, but the suspension feels alright. Aside from the looks, the girder forks are indistinguishable from the telescopic forks. It feels exactly the same to me. But we'll see once I get it out for a test drive. I'm building the battery next so I can get it wired up and tested before I do any more fabricating. Until then, I hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever it is that you and your loved ones are celebrating this time of year, I hope you enjoy it. Take care, folks.